welcome back to my channel my name is Janelle and this is not only a trying to conceive channel anymore this is also a pregnancy channel for those who return all the time I thank you very much from the bottom of my heart for all your support and love and for those who have just joined in um, welcome to my channel and don't forget to click like subscribe and the notification bell so that you can get every video so today there is so much to talk about, so whatever time it is, grab your coffee, grab your tea, grab your wine if you're not pregnant and um, come along this journey with me. Um, so today I am six weeks and three days pregnant and I'm going to go over what's happened over the last um, nearly couple of weeks that I've been missing in action. I have been so busy working, we've been very understaffed and I haven't even been able to film and I didn't want to do quick videos in the car so I'm sorry that you've had to wait. I do want to thank each and every one of you that have been jumping on YouTube and private messaging me on Instagram and always sending your love and support and asking how I am. It means everything to me that you, you care and um, you are supporting me and um, it's, it's beautiful. I love it. So thank you so much. There's so many of you there. Um, I'd love to shout out, but I haven't actually given the permission for you. So... Uh, let's start okay where do I start okay so I've done my four to five weeks and so I'll do now my five to six weeks so I grab my little piece of paper that I had out on my phone and I just dropped something um, let's start off um, so since I've been pregnant I just wanted to go over this with you but since I've been pregnant I have actually been on the um, Klexane injections and these are blood fitting injections and my tummy is very very bruised from it so I have shown you those before um, I have some really big whoppers uh, of bruises meaning and I've also got the pessaries so they're progesterone as well so I've been taking them every single day um, right so what has happened um my symptoms let's go over my symptoms so my symptoms from five to six weeks um have kind of been the same as four weeks but um a little bit more so the, they've been gassy and the headaches the headaches have been constant uh not really bad but it's just like always there so, and you know that it's there and i've had to take a couple of panadol every now and then um so i don't take anything else but panadol um, a little bit of dizziness every now and then um, I'm not sure if it's when I don't eat enough food or I think it's just random actually um, I have had um, sore breasts now that has kind of got you know that it's like it's there and then each day it feels like it's that little bit more and that little bit more so uh, I feel that that's a good thing um, I have and I'll go back to that um, when I talk about my HCG levels as well how I know I kind of knew that things were progressing so I've been very moody and cranky and Brad if you're watching this I am so sorry I have been so i don't know sensitive to everything and i mean everything just got to give me one remark and then that's it you know i feel like i'm you know crazy so uh, let's hope that doesn't last too long uh, lucky i um the, uh, brad's very forgiving and uh so am i if he snaps back at me but that's very very, very rare yeah don't don't make a pregnant woman angry um, I haven't really been hungry so I thought I would get like this boost of starvation and I haven't uh, maybe only through the night like I've woken up to go to the toilet and I've been hungry but I've gone back to sleep uh, and speaking of that um, it's only been the last few days probably four that I've needed to go to the toilet more and more so instead of like once or twice through the night it's four times a night and uh, yeah annoying um, one biggest thing is extreme thirstiness now I every time I've gone to the toilet like that four times through the night I'm like coming out and grabbing that water and just drinking it down like I haven't drunk any water for like a week so that's um, very strange for me and I'm not a big water person I wish I was but 
uh, I don't have, it's like I, you should have time but I just don't have time I'm just on the go all the time uh, bloating so I've had some bloating but nothing major um, it's that's also only happened the last few days where I felt more bloated and um, heavy feeling in the bottom of my tummy and that's especially in the last four days so with that I've also had cramping which has been very worrying for me um, because like I know you have normal cramping because that's what's supposed to happen your uterus is getting bigger and um, that's natural thing that should happen but however one day I did and I think that was back on about 25 dpo um, I and I'm so sorry but there's going to be some TMI in here I should have said that at the beginning but this is a pregnancy um, journey and you're going to hear that a lot so this one particular day I'd gone to the toilet and wiped and it was a very light light pink and totally freaked me out it really did and I thought oh here we go it's it's I'm gonna miscarry again so as you don't as you, people that have done it just jumped on here I've had six back-to-back -back miscarriages so now um, I'm on number seven pregnancy and um, every little step you um, analyze everything and I mean everything um, so yeah I had that little slight little bit pink and it didn't happen again the only other thing was a little bit of um, a brown but that's it and it was really nothing um, but it freaked me out so that's when the cramping actually started probably that day or the next day and every day every day I was looking at um, my tissue toilet paper uh, wondering what was going to be on there so it's totally freaked me out uh, what else have I had um, a little bit of back aches uh, shortness of breath quite a lot uh, nothing too um, over the top but I, I do know it's there um, extreme fatigue so I had that definitely when I first started when I first found out I was pregnant and then uh, about well last week I hit week five might have been five and just over five weeks and I was just I couldn't even keep my eyes open and then all of a sudden the weekend came and I had this boost of energy for two or three days and then I went back downhill again so super 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 tired to the point where even driving home is an effort and because I'm an hour away um, when I finish work it's it have really has been an effort so I want to go to bed the second I walk in the door it's like nobody talk to me I want to shower and I want my bed that is all I want um, unfortunately that doesn't work out when you have a family <laughs> but it's in my head and I pray that I can but I can't okay so the next thing is um, the smells so my son was making noodles so that was michael you've seen him before he makes noodles and i love noodles so he makes it for me and i usually have these magi soya um soya noodles they're kind of like asian and i love asian noodles and um he made them and I, I almost vomited i and just on the smell and they're one of my favorite things to have so go figure also coke so I'm not that I'm a big coke drinker but every now and then I do like to have coke and I drank some coke after having a packet of chips as you do um, it's like a savory thing you know and it tasted disgusting and since then it's tasted disgusting so I've now gone on to raspberry soda so that has that is my thing now I hate um, drinking coke if I had to it'd be just a sip um what else is there no uh, not noodles sorry um mac and cheese so we have this mad i think it's called magic uh, mac and cheese just in a packet you throw water with it and i nearly can't get enough of them they're only like a little size um portion sorry it's enough for me so i love them and i've nearly lived on them because i haven't been very hungry anything bigger than that um i feel terrible so in saying that as well um what frightened me on top of that pink discharge was that i had steak and veggies one night and 
within probably an hour or so I started getting these tummy pains and I was up all night worried that I was going to have an eptopic or something like that. They were like knots in my stomach. So there was no like cramping, like going to have diarrhea or anything like that. It was like someone was just twisting my insides. It was awful. And the top of my tummy and everything was like that. And I literally was you know, like leaning over the bed, you know, as if you're in labor and you're leaning over the bed and it wasn't labor pains or anything like that, that type of pain. It was something totally different. And I was, I was worried. And also Brad was really worried. So he was, he woke up all the time freaking out whether he thought whether I was still breathing. Um, but the pains were really, really bad. And I nearly contemplated going to the hospital and I just thought, I would just hold on that little bit more and eventually it did go away um, so yeah Brad had these crazy dreams in the middle of the night and he kept waking up going oh my god are you okay are you okay are you okay <laughs> oh no I the poor bugger so um, yeah anyway the next morning they were gone and never had them again um, but it did have in the back of my mind also a topic you know with the slight bleed and that happening um, so I also had um, constipation and that was from the iron tablets I think so I started taking iron which has made me feel a little bit better and um, but also it makes you constipated and insomnia so very hard sleeping sometimes I can't sleep and it is hard because I'm on night shifts so I do two 10 hour days two 14 hour nights so we do four on four off um, so today was my last night shift this morning and I basically came home crashed for four hours for the first time because I never sleep and I did this time and then my kids came home and we went to the movies and I've just literally got home to film this um, yeah so my worries um, understandably it's very hard um, some people never go through what uh, we some of ladies do and that's multiple miscarriage and things going wrong your assumptions um, googling is very bad and you shouldn't do it and I do do it and I know that um, people won't agree with it and they'll say stop googling you know you're going to drive yourself crazy but realistically we're not going to stop um, googling my worries have been at the moment um, my HCG levels so my HCG levels and my scan so I had my HCG levels drawn and I did get them. I've actually mucked around with, after my scan, which I'll talk about later, I've actually mucked around with all my uh, days past ovulation and realized I think that I was one day behind. So when I got my, when I got my um, first positive with you guys at uh, 10 DPO, I think I was only nine DPO. So we'll go back on to that uh, after I really went back and had a look. So I got my um, first HCG level at 10 DPO, let's say, and that was 16. And then my next, and my progesterone was 67. And I'll put these, I'll put these on here as I'm talking to you as well. And my next one was two days later and it was, oh sorry, it was three days later and it was 16. D4. So the had a 36 hour increase, um, which was I was happy about that. And then 15 DPO, which was two days later after that, it was 116. So I was a little bit concerned because it didn't quite double, and that was only a 55 hour increase, um, which had me a little bit worried. So the next one was five days, I think, later. Five days later it was so 20 dpo it was come back as 1131 which i was much um happier with because that was a doubling rate of 36 and a half hours and my progesterone was 66 so i felt pretty good about that number i thought yes you know it's going pretty good my next one was done at 24 dpo and so that one there is another four days I think yeah four days later and it was 3,000 so I was a little bit um, 
borderline there going it's okay it's a 68 hour rise and you know is it acceptable but when of course we google on our hcg calculators it come up as a normal increase so as long as it's i think more than 60 percent or something like that and it was so after a while i settled down and thought okay yep that's good uh, so three days after that at 27 DPO I had another HCG and it was only 5,220 which is just over a 90 hour doubling rate and that started concerning me because it felt like they started getting longer and longer like it was all of a sudden and um, I didn't think it had slowed down that much so quickly I thought it because because I started off with such low numbers so I got so concerned that I pushed one of my scans forward uh, only because Brad was going away and he's gone away now but he was going away underground and I knew that I have no contact with him and if I had my scan as per schedule on Monday he wouldn't be here and if it was going to go wrong I didn't want to be alone and I didn't want to you know, I have to tell him another week later that something has happened because he's got, he doesn't have service. So I pushed it to this Thursday and I got my another, another HCG level done as well. And I tell you, I felt sick the whole time waiting for the ultrasound because um, in my head I was like, okay, if I have another 90 hour rise, I should expect at least 9,100. So I gave them a call and then they said, I oh, will call you back. And this was like 11 o'clock and I never, they never got back to me before the scan. And I wanted to know the number because usually the, um, the technician actually asks you what your HCG levels are. So I wanted to tell her and I wanted to have a figure in my head because online Googling again will say that um, a heartbeat can be seen at 10,800. So I was hoping that it'd be 10,800, um, which deep in, deep inside, I was like, it's not going to be, it's, you know, um, but, but then on the other hand, I was like, through the night, I was like, oh, my symptoms, like my boobs were getting even sore and they hurt so much. And I thought there was something going wrong. I wouldn't have all these symptoms. So cut it out, Janelle. And, you know, make this a positive experience, you know, but you just can't help it. It's, you know, if you can, if I know many ladies are in the same shoes as me, you will totally understand how my feelings are and um, how panicked you would feel when you're going through, you know, pink discharge, knotting in your stomach, um, you know, cramping, not having a beautiful HCG rise like I've seen many, many women um, have triple or more each time, you know, so you kind of get start getting a little bit nervous. So that brings me to those HCG levels. So they came back at 10,700 at 8.30 in the morning. So I didn't get them until after my scan and when I rang her, she said, you know, they were 10,700 and I tell you, I was so, so relieved. Um, and she said, but she said my progesterone was going to, was 37 and I said, it was used to be 67 I said it's dropped quite a lot I said is there anything else that we need to be taking or you know because it worries me and she said that um, the doctor seemed to be okay with it and then when you come in on Monday she will discuss that with you then but at the moment you don't need to change any medication so she said to me um well it's actually risen and I thought oh well how's it risen but the last couple of blood tests that I've had, when I've got my HCG, when I've asked for my progesterone, that she's just, they've just said, oh, you know, they're fine or um, they've, they're stable. And now I know that they actually didn't. They're just saying that. So the one prior to that was 32. So it actually dropped to 32. And then the one I just had jump back up to 37, which isn't much, but still it's, it's better to go up. So that today... That is my one of my main concerns. So going through all those HCG levels, they have been my biggest um, concern um, so far. And those are the weird symptoms. Uh, it came down to uh, my scan. So yes, on our way to the scan, uh, I've decided to tell Brad what's been going on. So I have told him nothing. I have made out that everything is perfect. I haven't received 
um, you know, like any, I haven't even told him my levels. And normally the second they come through, I'm going, oh, guess what they are, you know, kind of thing. And I have not given anything to him. And he hasn't even twigged that, you know, um, there's like nothing happening. So on the, the way to the scan, I decided to tell him because I was afraid of what we're going to see at the scan. And I didn't want him to be, um, you know, like shocked you know like oh what did you tell me something was wrong or whatever i didn't want that so i said just said to him look um i'm not expecting see how i had a breath <laughs> um i'm not expecting a lot today um if we do and we see a heartbeat i'll be so happy i said but i've been really concerned about our hcg levels and they haven't been doubling like what i think you know they should be like healthy you know like 90 hours to me just seems like you know a long doubling um yeah so anyway i told him my concerns so he was prepared um for the worst and we hope for the best um so anyway we go in there and i literally only drank 300 mils of water uh and you're supposed to actually drink like um a liter maybe or something like that and i had drunk that and i literally thought i was going to pee myself i was so full i could not even hold the technician um we were in the waiting room 10 minutes I said to Brad, I've got to go to the toilet. There is no way I'm going to hold this pee. My tummy was hurting so bad from drinking 300 mils of water. Like, never happened. Never happens. And I am, like, the best, um, you know, like, at holding my pee. I mean, I shouldn't. But, you know, I could go all day. Like, I'm very good, um, very good bladder. So I'm like, I have to go to the toilet. I said, I'm sorry. So I'd gone to the toilet. I came out. And guess what? The technician appeared. And said, you know, yeah. And I said to her, look, I'm so sorry, but I've, I have gone to the toilet. And I knew that, um, like, they don't, they do an abdominal one for like 10 seconds and then go, oh, we're going to do transvaginal. So I don't know why they try and make you hold all this water in an early pregnancy anyway, when they look for two seconds and then make you go to the toilet. So anyway, she goes, oh, don't worry about it. Let's, you know, come in and we'll just have a look and then... Um, you know, if we can't see anything, go to the toilet. So I, walk, I lay down and she put this, the scan on and, um, you know, the sack come up straight away. Um, but she, And she said, oh, you've got heaps of water in there. And I thought, oh, my gosh, I just went and I couldn't stop. <laughs> so I still had a whole heap of water. So she just said, look, go to the toilet, empty your bladder again, come back in, we'll do a transvaginal one. So I was happy with that. makes me feel comfortable and um yeah went back in so it was really hard we went in and she did the scan and i will put some footage in here somewhere i just have to play with it because brad did an awesome job he did the sneaky cam so you're not allowed to to take videos here um in australia i don't think maybe specialist rooms but not in normal scannings so he did the sneaky cam and he did a freaking awesome job and i was so proud of him so he got the whole lot on video however there's this weird background noise and it's like someone flushing toilets and i don't know i don't know it's just got really weird noise in it so i'm gonna have to either tweak it or put some music in there and only show you the scan so yeah anyway back to the scan um so we went in and she was very quick at it so she just said um there's a gestational sac um, there's the yolk sac and basically within a minute or two she says and I can't there's nothing else really measurable so you'll have to probably go back to you know and have a scan in a couple of weeks and right there because I said to Brad if we don't see a heartbeat today or something like that like that's you know we're not going to sit here and carry this on you know like because they build your hopes up and we've been through this that many times you know I so said by six weeks three days you know, you're going to see a heartbeat and or fetal pole or whatever. So she tried a different angle and um, up it came. So it was the gestational. So I'll have to, I'll see if I can get a photo for you. So I'm going to put the scan up anyway, but I'm going to show you a photo. Um, and I hope it comes up here. Um, but anyway, it was right in the corner, like hiding. So up it came and she started measuring it. So at first she me started measuring it was only like coming up as um, she goes, oh, you're only, yeah, um, you're measuring uh, five and a half weeks or something like that. I'm like, no, I'm not five and a half weeks. There's no way. Like 
I got a early pregnancy test pretty early so I can't be you know like a one maybe two days out but I you know definitely um, yeah I'm not five and a half weeks you know I, I'm definitely I think I think it was six weeks two days so if if I had late implantation or I had a very early like if I had an EDPO pregnancy test positive it might be you know six weeks one day so then she did some other measurements and they were between five weeks six days and six weeks one day so uh, measuring around 3.7 millimeters to 4.1 millimeters so um, I was a little bit happier there but I was still like very 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 nervous um, so as she went along um, she you know got more and more good pictures um, that they, they were terrible at first and then you could see it looks like a little jelly bean so um, I'll show you a picture if I can um, now can you see it there <laughs> so that is our little jelly bean or a peanut or whatever you want to call it I'll have to give it a little name and um, so we were very relieved to see that um, like very relieved then all of a sudden she goes I think I can see a flicker and I was like, oh my God, I just wanted to cry. And I was like, oh, hold it together. It may not be, you know, but you can see this like, you know, like, you know, it moving like this, you know, or not, not the, um, what do they call it? Time for fetal pole, not the fetal pole, but you can see the heart, you know, like moving. And, um, it's probably one of the, you know, greatest moments then, um, that I seen that. And all of a sudden she starts measuring and I'm like, oh my gosh, and I'm saying, oh, please, 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 please show, please show, please show. You know, like, I'm like, you know, please give us something, you know. And then, you know, she's clicking away and she says, look, it's very hard. It's very tiny. Um, yeah, but she just said, so this is one of my concerns, is that it was beating at 86 beats per minute. So very worrying because I thought, as she said, it is a little low and we'd like to see it at 100 beats per minute. And it was 86. So I was, so she said, you'll need a follow up. However, she said she was not, she is, she is absolutely confident that, you know, you have gestational sac, your yolk sac, your fetal pole, and she, um, 100%, you know, there's um, heartbeat, but she was not 100% on the measurement. So it could be that, she said that it could be her measurements not big enough um, that it hasn't picked up the full heart rate so it actually could be more um, so that's the only thing she couldn't give a back 100 percent is that her measurements could be a little bit out and that kind of proved it because um my another concern i have is that the yolk sac so the yolk sac has come up at six point four millimeters and when I look well she never said anything about the yolk sac she always said oh this is the yolk sac and this is the embryo and this is a heartbeat and blah 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 and the only thing she said was the heartbeat was low but she did not say anything about the yolk sac however I know because I've had a big a bigger yolk sac before and I've miscarried so my last one might have been the eight millimeters or something like that and I did have a miscarriage so this was 6.3 or 6.4 some measurements and it concerns me a lot now because um, it doesn't like to be, some sites say five millimeters, some sites say six. Um, a lot of the sites say that it, over eight millimeters, it's just, it is varies, but most sites do say five or six, um, preferably not over six. So when I say in 6.3 or 6.4 millimeters, it does worry me that there are one that can be a chromosomal issue um, or two can be a, um, could turn into a miscarriage. So that is just another added worry. That one, there's a low heart rate to the yolk sac is um, what they would call enlarged, even though she didn't say that to me. I think that, I think, I know they don't like to tell you these things, but I think if it was enlarged or uh, um, then or abnormal, she told me the heart rate was um, a bit low. So why wouldn't she tell me the yolk sac was um, a little bit big? So I thought that if she was going to hide that from me, why wouldn't, why would she not hide the heartbeat? So 
um, yeah so anyway um, we were at this time um, I'm not trying not to analyze everything but it is is very hard not to we are so excited to see that we've seen a heartbeat and everything seems to be on track um, there's just those two little hiccups there that uh, when we go back so I'm going back on Monday to my fertility specialist she will then do another scan so I'll then know uh, on that day whether it's still a heartbeat and whether the yolk sac has decreased because it can decrease as well so it decreases over time i don't know whether it's just started off big and then you know it'll decrease or whether it'll keep increasing um, the other thing i got i did get the films back online and i checked the yolk sac and the yolk sac actually it says um on google again it says that the measurements should be from inner to inner um and one the, all the measurements were from one outer and one inner so I'm hoping that little bit little gap that she has done is incorrect and you know it whether it comes just under the six mil or not I'm not sure but it does say measurements from inner to inner um, of the yolk sac and it's her measurements were one was the an outer outer um, ring and one was the inner so um, I'm hoping that it was just her measurements were wrong um, so yeah they are um, uh, four days now of waiting to see whether we hit another hurdle or whether we jump over another hurdle on Monday. Um, we will see and time will only tell. Okay, so Brad just interrupted with a phone call, but I had to take it because he's under he just come out from underground. So um, I'll just finish off talking about my ultrasound um, by saying that the lady did say 86 beats per minute uh, and it was a bit low. However, I googled and I, please I don't judge me on it, um, but I did Google and one website um, and not just one, but this particular website, sorry, had said with a crown rump length of under five millimeters. So mine was between 3.9 and 4.1 the heart rate should be 80 to 90 beats. So to me, it's totally normal. And that's what I'm going off. So you can see that there. Um, the other thing I'm gonna go off as well is that I checked another website and this is to give me clarification and more education on the oak sack. So most of them said no greater than six um, can indicate uh, miscarriages and can indicate chromosome issues this one here is about um, abnormal and normal pregnancies and this is one of the ladies who have given me support and um, told me to check it out but um, a certain video out so it's about the suspicious so they're suspicious if uh, an enlarged yolk sac of greater than seven millimeters so I'm hoping that's correct and she never discussed my yolk sac size so I'm hoping that is the reason why so see there enlarged yolk sac seven millimeters so that says suspicious so, so that's just one of the websites that have um, yeah information on um, the viabilities of pregnancies and things like that so uh, I think that's the only bit of information I've got for you. Um, that is probably it. So we've now gone through my five to six week uh, pregnancy symptoms, my HCG levels, my scan, all my worries and my concerns. Thank you so much for listening to me. I really appreciate it. It's always not going to be, you know, good news. And I didn't want to throw, you know, um, throw it out there that everything's going well and everything's going perfect. I want you to see what's happening now and what's real because many of us are going through exactly the same things. Please comment below if you have any experience or have gone through this before and whether it was a good outcome or a bad outcome don't sugarcoat it put it down below um, I would love to hear um, your experiences with it because you know um, sometimes you get sick of holding on to their hope all the time and with my last six miscarriages it was just hope 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 and it never was a good outcome so I just want them to be real with me you know um, I don't want them to drag things out but at the moment I am positive about this pregnancy I have you know Google has been my friend today and it's given me positive um, 
feedback saying you know that yet no it's not really low and um, my yolk sac is okay um, the measurements and she did tell me about the measurements where she didn't measure properly so I'm not going to be 100% reliant on what she said uh, so thank you all again for all your support and love jump on Instagram rainbow baby mama 77 and private message me there if you want I've had that many ladies get on there and on YouTube and ask how I am and um, how I've been feeling and am I okay and um, you know I feel so warm and happy when I see those messages because not every day has been a good day and 100% have to tell you that some days I've wanted to cry because um, I don't want to go through number seven and I'm afraid that you know that that may happen um, so when they've when they've sent me these messages it has given me a smile from ear to ear that there is the love and support out there and ladies this is what this network's about it's getting on jumping on supporting liking subscribing commenting um giving each other that boost that we need just to get it get through each month um you know it's it means everything to all of us it's not just about our channels and who just we are it's about who you are as well and what journeys you're going through and how we share those experiences together so i know i keep saying thank you thank you but from the bottom of my heart i love you all and thank you so much for being a part of my channel and my journey and please give it a big thumbs up if you like this video don't forget if you're new like subscribe and click the notification bell because things can change very quickly and you want to be up to date with the video so until monday um i have to see the specialist on monday and also have another scan on monday with her um i'll either update that night or I won't be able to update till Thursday, but either way, I'll pop on a little post if I'm going to be delayed to let you know. And I'll update you then. So until then, the lady's going through ovulation and your two-week wait, waiting for your BFP, whatever section you are in your monthly cycle, I wish you the best of luck sending you massive amounts of baby dust and um, praying for you every day. So thank you so much, and we'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye.